Good day and welcome back to the channel. You're watching the most objective magic review channel here on YouTube. Today we're taking a look at a mentalism effect with cards that was put out by Vanishing Ink Magic a couple of months ago. This is called A Beautiful Mind by Paul Wilson. So for $15 you can pick up this 20 minute instructional where you're going to learn Paul Wilson's handling of a mental card routine that was published by Hector Chadwick a couple of years ago. Um, as usual, you guys can find timestamps below if you want to just skip ahead to any part of this review. If you enjoy these analytical magic reviews, I would recommend that you subscribe to the channel. So this review is going to um, consist of a background of the plot. We're going to take a look at the original effect that this is based off of. Uh, and then we're going to go over this download, what you can expect to get. I'm going to try to answer those questions that you guys have. Then we're going to go over my thoughts and my analysis of this and why I rate this so low at 2.16 out of 5. We're going to go over the actual rating step by step. I'm going to give you guys a couple of bonuses if you stick with me to the end of the review. And then I'm also going to give you some other alternative routines that you may be interested in that are very similar to this and some final thoughts. Um, so let's start out with the background of the plot. So this card plot is as old as the hills and it was based on Ed Marlowe's uh, trick called a wishing card trick that was published in the Cardition and that effect basically the magician would put out a card, ask somebody what card they thought it was, then they would put out a second card and go to a second spectator, and so on and so forth, and then they'd be able to show that each card matches the one that each person named. Um, he does give an out as well, so if you get up to like five spectators and you haven't gotten a direct hit, he does give you an out, which I didn't think was really good, but it's there. Um, so Hector Chadwick took that idea and came up with his effect, which was called A Card Behind, and that was published in The Mental Mysteries of Hector Chadwick. And that is the real starting point of this effect. In Hector Chadwick's version, it was a off-the-cuff momentary exercise of clairvoyance with a spectator. You'd put a card down, face down, you'd ask them to think of a card, um, then you'd say, no, well, you put out a second card, ask them to think of a card, they didn't get it. You put out a third card, ask them to think of a card, they would name that. And at that point, you could show them that the first card was off by one, the second card they got the card, but it was a wrong suit, and then the third card was a direct hit. And that was Hector Chadwick's routine. Um, the real issue with it was the ending. The ending was kind of weak. It, it relied on a slight that we all know, um, but it's done at such a bad moment that it's not very good. Now, when I originally read it myself, I came up with my own handling because I didn't like that ending. And I'm going to touch more on that near the end of this review if you watch to there. Um, so Paul Wilson basically took Hector Chadwick's effect and came up with his own solution to the ending. Um, it's funny because Paul Wilson says that, and I quote him, he says that this is his interpretation to an approach created by Hector Chadwick. Reality? No. <laughs> no, this is your variation of Hector Chadwick's effect. That's what it is, um, in a nutshell. Basically, you took Hector Chadwick's effect and you tried to improve it because the ending is not very good. Um, and we're going to get into that. So let's take a look at what this effect is, a beautiful mind. I'm gonna give you an idea of what you can expect here and try to just answer some basic questions you would have. So the real difference here, and you may have watched the uncut trailer that they put out, is there's two main versions of the effect that you can get. You can get this version that you will see on the trailer, and I'll leave a link below, um, where Basically, you put out a card, the spectator names a card, and you can show them that it's not the card they named, but it was close. You put out a second card, they name a card, and you show them that they're off by just the suit. And then finally, you put out a third card, and you're able to cleanly show them 
that that card really is the card that they named and you can show them that you predicted it ahead of time. And that version of the effect is very rare. The likelihood is you will never have that outcome. I never had the outcome when I experimented with this effect over the past couple of months. Although Paul Wilson says that you'd be able to force a card, as he said, like 99% of the time, reality is no, you're not gonna be able to do that. Um, the most likely outcome is that you're gonna be performing the second version of this effect. And the second version is exactly the same version pretty much as the Hector Chadwick version. The difference is that um, you know, you put out an odd back card in the beginning and you don't really put much importance to it and you go through the process of asking them, you know, you put out a card, you say, what card do you think that is? No, no. You put out, let's try again. You put out a second card. What card do you think that is? No, no. And then you finally put out a third card. You ask them what card they think it is and then you're like, hmm. And then you show them that you made a prediction ahead of time that the first card would be off by one, the second card would be the wrong suit, and the third card would be perfect, and you can show them exactly that each card is in that way, and you've predicted ahead of time. That is the second variation that you're gonna learn, and if you are curious, this is beginner level because there's no difficult slights. He does go over a couple of variations of what you can do because the handling um, is a handling where you're using the prediction card to force the outcome, so to speak. And so because of the procedure, um, it's very beginner level um, and very easy to perform. Obviously, this is not an effect that you would want to repeat. There's no gimmicks in play. You just have to have that extra card. And it does get pretty good reactions from lay people. Although in my own experience, I kind of got mixed reactions from people and we're gonna get into that Shortly, Paul Wilson does go over some contingencies, like he gives you some ideas of what you can do in terms of how you can switch a card. Unfortunately, he really doesn't teach you any real slights, and the download primarily focuses on that main handling of using that prediction card um, to force the outcome, so to speak, as you would expect. That's pretty much what you can expect. He does go over some psychology, which I thought was very useful and very helpful just in general, um, but that's pretty much it. So let's go over my thoughts, um, my analysis, my deep analysis of this effect, and we're gonna go over the rating as well. So my analysis is this, is that, you know, I rated this as 2.16. And the reason for that is because I felt that Paul Wilson's handling is not really a good solution to this. And um, when you watch his explanation, he talks about how Hector Chadwick had this idea of why he wouldn't show the spectator the card immediately. And unfortunately, I don't know where Paul Wilson came up with this because he, he says, no, but that's interesting. And I don't know where he came up with that because you're not gonna find that in the book. In fact, Hector Chadwick actually has a different pattern presentation in the book, which I thought was very clever, especially for the third card. I'm not actually gonna reveal it here, um, but Paul Wilson doesn't even talk about that. When he talks about what he says that Hector Chadwick says in the book, it's like, I don't know where he came up with that because nowhere is it in the book. Um, I have the book and it's not in there. So that's totally off base. That's the first thing I thought was really kind of off. Um, the other thing was that I thought that here Paul Wilson has totally changed the effect because the effect is really an effect of clairvoyance with the spectator. It's an off the cuff type of impromptu, hey, let's try this. But what Paul Wilson did was now his solution of using that prediction changes the effect. The effect is no longer an effect of clairvoyance. Now it's an effect of premonition because you have a prediction from the beginning. And unfortunately, it falls into the too perfect theory. It just is very hard for a spectator to swallow that you predicted ahead of time that they'd be off by one, that they'd get the wrong suit, and then the third time they'd be perfect. It just doesn't seem very likely overall. And the problem with it is that the handling muddies the waters. The handling of having to go back to the deck, back and forth, it doesn't look clean at all. Any prediction effect has to be pure and direct. 
any time that your spectator has any suspicion that some funny business is going on, that's it. The whole effect is sabotaged. Um, and so that's why I really didn't like this version of this effect. Um, I actually thought it was really disappointing to see that his main solution, you have to keep going back to the deck so much with the prediction card and moving the other cards. There's no motivation for those actions. And so unfortunately, I really didn't like it for that. You may like it. Like I said, I got mixed reactions from people when I experimented with Paul Wilson's handling here. You may like it, but I really didn't like it for that reason. The psychology he goes over, some of it is really good. He tries to explain to you what cards he thinks magicians would think of more commonly. Reality is that it's really hard to predict what people will think of when you just tell them to think of a playing card. I did do my own research of that, and you can find articles like this. This was a paper that was published which was called The Perceptual and Cognitive Characteristics of Common Playing Cards. And in this analytical paper, the researchers here found that over half the time people would name one of four playing cards. And you can expect that, of course, the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Hearts, those are very well known, but also the Ace of Hearts and the King of Hearts. And in my own experiences, which this is kind of interesting from road testing this and performing Hector Chadwick's effect, my own version of Hector Chadwick's effect, I personally found the one playing card people name more commonly than any other actually is the Ace of Hearts, which that was just from my own experiences. You guys may think that that's something that's interesting or not. Um, so I think that that's really the main gist of my analysis of why I think that uh, this handling of Hector Chadwick's effect is so poor and why I would not recommend that you buy this. So let's go over the rating. Um, so in terms of originality, I would rate this as negative one, which is crazy because my rating should be just one to five, but I'm giving it a negative one because not only is it not original to Paul Wilson, it's not even his routine, it's Hector Chadwick's routine that he just basically changed slightly. So I give him a negative one for originality. For creativity, I would give him three out of five, which I think is more than generous. And I think it's because he did come up with a creative ending, um, which is a little bit different. I thought that the psychology that he teaches on the download is creative. Um, and so I give him three out of five. I think that's more than generous for creativity. Um, again, I think there's better solutions to this, especially if you're selling this to people. Um, in terms of the teaching, I would also give him three out of five, and I thought that was more than generous. And the main reasons is because, one, he doesn't go over every single contingency, meaning that after you put out the second card, what if you get a direct hit? He doesn't even touch on that. Whereas in the book, Hector Chadwick goes over every single contingency. And so I thought that he could have done a better job of his explanations of what do you do in this case? What do you do in that case? Um, I also thought that it was poor that he demonstrated some card switches and didn't teach them. Like he does demonstrate, um, you know, mucking a card, but doesn't go over in any way how to do it. Not even a simple rudimentary explanation. So that's totally useless to you. Um, it's not going to help you at all. And you're going to have to perform this um, using that unnatural procedure that he teaches you of uh, unmotivated movements, unfortunately. So I give him three out of five. Again, I thought that was generous. In terms of practicality, I would rate it as two and a half out of five because you have to carry an extra card with you. So in that way, it's not going to be practical for a lot of people. Even though you may say, oh, it's just one extra card everything adds up having to carry around anything extra means if you don't have the card with you you can't even perform the effect so two and a half for practicality for audience reactions i would give it a three and a half out of five again very generous because i got mixed reactions and because you're never hardly ever i would say are going to get that same outcome of the trailer that he showed you there that's very unlikely um, in my own experiences i never got that um, and then finally, the price, uh, the price I would rate it as two out of five. And the reason is because even though it's only $15, I don't even think you should sell this to people. I think you should just give this away for free because it's basically a small variation of somebody else's effect. Um, and so my final rating for this is 2.16 out of five. 
I would recommend you don't pick it up. Um, I think some people could pick this up and they might like it because the handling is so simple. But I think if you're looking for a good effect that's very convincing, I don't think that this is a good option for you. In fact, I offer to you guys to teach you my handling of the effect and my own solution to the ending, which I think is much better because, you know, when I first got the book and I learned the routine, I liked the routine. Um, those of you that have followed my channel and some of you I've actually showed you my solution to, um, you know, the named card on the table. Um, and I've showed you guys that solution and I came up with my own solution to this original effect by Hector Chadwick, which was called a card behind. Um, and I'm willing to actually share that with you guys for free because I'm not here to try to take your money, obviously. Um, and I think you'd probably like my version better because it doesn't change the effect. The effect is still an impromptu effect of clairvoyance. And the slight that I use is very simple. Um, and it goes under the radar because it happens at the moment of least importance, really. It's not even the moment of most importance. That moment of most importance, that card that's a direct hit is nowhere near the deck. Um, so if you are interested and you want to learn my handling of Hector Chadwick's uh, effect or my variation, you can send me an email um, and I will share my thoughts with you um, because obviously I'm just here to try to help you guys out. And uh, let's go over a couple of other versions of this premise or this plot that you may be interested in because I try to give you guys extra stuff in my reviews because I want my review to be really complete. Um, so one version of this plot that you guys may like was Jay Sankey's uh, version, which was called Vital Statistics. I love the name of that, Vital Statistics. Well, I just like vitals, you know, because it sounds medical. But in Jay Sankey's version, which he put out on his DVD called 22 Blows to the Head, it was also published in the Jay Sankey compendium um, that was put out by Vanishing Ink Magic. I think it was like the second volume of that. It was called the Definitive Jay Sankey. That was the name of the, of the books, right? Um, in the second volume, you can find it there too. So Jay Sankey's solution to this was very simple. You put a card on the table, you ask the spectator what card they think it is, and then you're like, oh, let's try again, but let's not be so ambitious. You put out a second card, you say, what, what suit do you think this is? And then you're like, well, let's even go a little simpler. You put out a third card face down and you say, what color do you think the card is? Do you think it's red or black? And then you can pick up the cards and turn each one over and, and you can show them you know, you thought this card was red and it's red. You thought that this card was a spade, it's a spade. And the card you named was the 10 of diamonds and here it is the 10 of diamonds. And so that was Jay Sankey's solution to this plot. Um, I used it for years myself. You may like it and you can find it in those places. Another version of this plot that you may like was a version that was put out by Harapin Ankh. And uh, it was actually initially published in Genie Magazine. I can't remember what volume or what year because that's where I read it initially. Um, and it was called Direct Triple Prediction. Uh, you can also find it in his book called Principia. And in his version, the difference was that you would tell the spectator ahead of time, look, I'm going to spread the cards and I want you to touch a card, but it has to be like the nine of spades. And you just, spread, they touch a card, you out jog it and you go, okay, let's try again. You don't show it to them yet. You keep spreading and you say, now I want you to touch another card, but it has to be the six of diamonds. They touch a card, you out jog it, and then you continue to spread and you tell them, okay, uh, let's do a third card. I want you to touch, you know, for instance, the seven of uh, clubs or whatnot. And then you can strip out all three cards and show them that they named each card. Now, Harapin Ankh's solution is very clever. He actually gives you more than one version of it. I'm a big fan of it. I like it a lot when I first read it in Genie Magazine. Um, so it's something you may want to take a look at if you're interested in it. And then finally, I'm going to give you one other variation or version of this card plot that also was published in Genie Magazine, and that was published by Roberto Giobi, and it also was called, it was called A Triple Prediction. Um, and this was published in the 2012 May edition of Genie Magazine. Um, and basically it's the same exact kind of idea that you're gonna 
pretty much like a mental epic effect with playing cards is really what it comes down to. You could take a look at it. If you did pick up his book that was published this last year, um, I think it was called Secret Sessions. It's also in the book too. I saw it in the table of contents. So you can learn it from there too. Um, no, it was called Sharing Secrets. That's the name of the book. It was called Sharing Secrets. So if you picked up the book, you'd also find it there too. So there's some different versions of the plot if you are interested in it. I think it's an excellent card plot and anyone who's interested in mentalism, mentalism with playing cards, I think you're really gonna like it a lot. You're gonna really get good reactions. So just summing up here at the end, um, I would highly recommend that you guys just skip this download. Um, it is a very simple handling, although I think you're gonna be disappointed really with how it's not really clean. It doesn't look very good. Um, as usual, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning into my magic reviews, and I'll see you on the next one.